Choo-choo. Currently, I live in Escondido, California. I'm 38 years old, and I'm a public school teacher. Nice. My wife's name is Christy, and we just celebrated our 11th anniversary of being married. We have three daughters together. I love hiking, backpacking. I was born in 1985. This was right when we were in the height of the AIDS epidemic in the United States. And for a while, it wasn't sure how it was passed. Every time we would go to an event, it would be another person had passed away. It really left a strong impact. My name is Sean, and I'm a person living with severe hemophilia A. Hemophilia type A is a genetic bleeding disorder. Um, it means that when you were born, you were uh, born without a certain set of genes that allow you to produce a protein called factor VIII. And with this clotting factor missing, blood clots cannot form. People would continue to bleed with minor cuts or spontaneous joint bleeding or other bleeding manifestations. I have severe, which means I have under 1% factor VIII in my blood, um, which means I just don't heal at all. Chemophilia is one of the oldest diseases described. It was even described in the Talmud 2,000 years ago or so because of this presentation at circumcision. We like to call it the royal disease. Actually, Queen Victoria in England was the carrier, and from her it spread throughout the royalties um, in, in Europe. This was Hemophilia B, not Hemophilia A. Hemophilia A is about 1 in 5,000 live births. Hemophilia B is about 1 in 20,000 live births. Usually severe hemophilia is diagnosed in childhood, most often um, with circumcision. Nowadays, doctors would order clotting assays to see if hemophilia is present. So like Many babies in the United States, I was circumcised, and it was very clear pretty quickly after the procedure that something wasn't going right. The AIDS crisis was a horrible period for patients with hemophilia because most of them died. Quite often, if you had a bad bleed and you had to go to the hospital in order to get treated, you would get a blood transfusion. Well, before they knew that HIV and AIDS was transferred via blood, a lot of the blood supply got uh, contaminated. And so many of our patients contracted AIDS, hepatitis C, and B, and died because there wasn't any treatment for HIV. It was very hard as a young person in the late 80s. Growing up with hemophilia, I had to make a lot of compromises with um, the activities that I could do. In fact, I do remember the first hematologist that I ever had told my mother that I wouldn't be able to play at recess and that I should probably stay in the library and read books. Just a few bleeds can cause lifelong joint damage and um, lead to disability, to pain, and to dysfunctioning. I've had injuries that put me out for months, um, where normally a person who doesn't have hemophilia might heal in a week or two. And for me personally, it led to feeling very depressed for long periods of time, feeling resentful and angry, having anxiety. I first learned Sean had hemophilia pretty early on when we were dating because at that point in time he was giving himself regular infusions of his medication and I had an extreme anxiety of needles but it was something I had to get used to. One thing I always knew um, from a pretty young age is that if I wanted to have children that if I had daughters they were going to be carriers. Sean explained to me that it's usually the mom is the genetic carrier, and because I'm not a carrier, our children would not be at risk. However, we've learned since then that while that's somewhat true, they can still show signs of it. 
hemophilia A or B are X-linked diseases, which means the gene that causes the disease is located on the X chromosome. So males are affected because they just have one X chromosome. For a female who is usually just a carrier of the hemophilia, she has two X chromosomes. So one is a good X chromosome, the other one is the diseased X chromosome. So most times that results in about 50% of factor eight and 50% is the lower end of normal, which usually goes unnoticed but there is a 50% chance she will give that disease chromosome to her son or her, her offspring who then manifests with severe hemophilia. I have three daughters. All three of them are carriers. Now, what I did not expect was one of my daughters to actually have hemophilia. Our daughter Sawyer has mild hemophilia, and we noticed with her she bruises much easier than the other two kids, and it takes her a lot longer to stop bleeding anytime she gets hurt or has a nosebleed. Once I found out, I was pretty upset because I felt quite guilty. I did not expect to have a child with hemophilia. He can carry a lot of guilt about the kids being affected, mostly Sawyer, and seeing how it impacts her life. But times have changed. The quality of care has gotten better. When I started um, in this field a good 15 years ago now, all we had was clotting factor. I think it was more just protect you from bleeding. Nowadays, we have very long clotting factor eight now, um, just recently approved a year ago, which just has to be administered once a week. We also, over the last decade, have advanced with balancing agents. So these are clotting factor free agents that mimic other components in the coagulation to replace or normalize coagulation. I can actually shoot it up subcutaneously. So I'll, similar to somebody with diabetes. The idea is to really work with the patient on an individual basis. Things like physical therapy, athletic programs, point of care ultrasound to really detect joint bleeding immediately when it happens and to adjust um, preparations and adjust treatment algorithms that will really enable to live a full life. It's not just prescribing a medication, it's really working with the patient to make that individualized approach to, to management based on the situation. They encourage you to do sports like swimming, running, cycling, because what they've figured out through many different joint studies is that if you are strong and in good shape, it actually reduces the amount of joint bleeds that you get. But the real downside to having hemophilia is internal bleeding, especially in joints. And it's still something that I find myself challenged to deal with. When I get a bad joint bleed, it means I can't play with my children. It means I have tough time at my job. For Sean, we usually call it severe hemophilia. It's severe bleeding complications. So here we really need to have a prophylaxis in place to prevent bleeding. And now for his daughter, who has about 25%, she has not a severe bleeding phenotype. We would call it mild hemophilia. And um, here we don't have to necessarily prevent. Bleeding might only occur with trauma, with surgeries. Sean really is very athletic, so he needs to have a treatment regimen um, to allow that type of lifestyle. The youth who is now transitioning into adulthood or the children who are starting out now may never have to experience that extent of joint disease that adults I take care of right now um, have to endure. idea is to have our federally supported treatment centers to provide all the care we can. 
I'm a big believer in helping educate your community and advocate for your community. So Sean is very involved in the local hemophilia community. He has been on the board for the San Diego chapter of the Hemophilia Association for as long as I can remember. And that is a very good thing because he is so engaged um, and so successful in managing his disease and a real idol for the young people to follow. Having hemophilia doesn't have to define you or your family. In our family, we don't let it put limits on us. We still experience so many fun things and active activities as a family. The unmet need will be still improving and building upon our already fantastic um, treatment options or prophylactic options. So while we have now gene therapy, which is a revolution, and now we're talking about almost a cure, but still falls short because um, current gene therapy might provide long-term expression of factor eight or also factor nine, but maybe not a cure for a lifetime. All these small successes have kind of led up to me feeling really, really content with having hemophilia, living a life okay, with here, hemophilia, and feeling that I've really been able to uh, achieve good things in my life, even though they're not the biggest, I feel yeah. great.